Hey, what's up guys? This is Liam Morweagle on your Overwatch and the whole crew are here today. We're going to be talking about these upcoming PTR changes. What we're going to do is first break them down, but we're going to do this whole discussion because there's so many meta implications that we want to talk about, things we think that are going to happen uh, with some of the nerfs and the, the changes that are about to happen. So Anna's biotic rifle, the damage has been reduced from 80 to 60, which is an interesting change. It makes her a lot worse at dueling people and her biotic grenade the impact has been reduced from 60 to 30, so it doesn't do as much damage when it hits someone. And the healing instantly hitting someone is no longer 100, it's actually 50. Moving on to Junk Rat, he no longer hurts himself with his own explosives, and we also assume this is for his ultimate too, which I think is a very, very big change and could bring him into the meta in a very cool way. Now, Orissa is getting some changes, but I don't even know if there's been enough time really to... Uh, have these make much of a difference but her magazine size has been lowered from 200 to 150 and it costs 15 more to use her ultimate ability supercharger sombra has been changed so that if you're within 15 meters of her you will be able to hear her go into or out of her stealth form we don't know what that's actually reduced from but we just know that it's 15 meters now and her translocator cooldown has been reduced from six seconds to four seconds now my favorite buff out of all of this is is Winston, where his cooldown now starts when his barrier is placed instead of when it ends, potentially taking five seconds off of the cooldown, which is a big deal, as we've always believed Winston's one of the most underrated heroes within the game. And finally, Zenyatta's alternate fire now recovers quicker from one second to 0.6, so it's nearly cut in half. So once you've used his alternate fire, it's much quicker to make another action after that, and his orb of discord can now target people through barriers. So there's a lot of changes around, and I think we're going to start with the Anna one because it's probably the most significant although they do all kind of bounce off of each other but Anna has been changed in a very very big way and she definitely can't duel people as much as she used to be able to and I think I'll let Frido go on from here. On this channel we spoke a lot about how powerful Anna can be but I think if these changes go live fully as they are now I'm a little bit worried that she's almost entering the mainly unplayable for most players type category that we might put like Genji or Hanzo or something that's too hard to play because now the way she interacts with so many different characters means that your disciplined positioning and staying alive as Ana is going to be harder than it ever has been before because instead of being able to three shot many squishies, including Farah, which is another side note, Farah gets a ghost buff in this patch. She no longer has as much self sustain because she only heals herself for 50 and she does less damage with Nate as well. So I'm a little bit concerned that maybe this nerf is a little bit too harsh, but I think undoubtedly one area that I do like is anytime we nerf triple tank, I'm kind of a happy guy because I would like Anna's kit to be engineered more towards her other aspects of what she can do because I've, I've spoke a lot about the shoot nade shoot combo, for instance, where the fastest burst healing you can get in the game in the shortest amount of time, that's very key. Oftentimes people say like, why don't you nade shoot shoot? Well, shoot nade shoot is the fastest way to reach the highest number, the most efficient. And because of that, now with this nerf, it's going to be about 230, whereas it was 280. And prior to that, it was over 300 uh, way back when. So because that is the case, that number is very interesting to me. Because when you start thinking about what a character like Roadhog can do when you're pumping healing into him, it's the difference between McCree's double tap headshot being more than the healing she can do in that same amount of time, remember? So two shots from McCree is just about almost a shoot nade shoot combo from Ana. He's out shooting that now. So triple tank is going to be weaker than it's ever been, which may be cause to rejoice, maybe. But... Is Ana so defenseless now that maybe other healers are simply better? I'm slightly worried, to be honest. I think, for me, the most interesting part of this change is the Farah ghost buff that you referred to. So we've made no secrets on this channel that actually part of an Ana's job is to uh, help deal with Farah because medium range hit scans that are very popular, like McCree and Soldier, actually aren't great at dealing with a Farah that plays uh, from uh, long distance away. So you know, Frido uh, made a video about that Farah play style. It's actually uh, quite hard to counter. Now, because Ana's damage doesn't fall off like the other hit scans, she was actually part of a good answer for that. But now her damage has been nerfed. Uh, Farah players, especially if they're combined with a pharmacy, 
we'll be able to have a lot more free reign. But actually, what I think it'll do is I think it'll force a lot more people into using Widow as a counter for Farah because um, Widow, if you can hit the shot, is actually a great answer to her. Um, but Farah is going to be very, very powerful if this change goes live, and I think it will come to define parts of the meta like it has done previously, where Farah was seemingly at the top of the pile. And I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. I kind of like Farah plays. I don't play Farah myself, but I recognise that she's a skill hero, and you know I think it's an interesting way for the game to go. Now, later on, we'll get into parts of the discussion I want to talk about comparing this new Ana to Zen, because if you get rid of Ana from the meta, she's not going to be played as much. I don't think they're trying to do that. I don't think they're trying to remove her from the game, but much like Frido says, only a small percentage of people will be able to play this new Ana and get the value they need from her. I think if you're in that meta, then Zen is going to step up, and then we have to deal with the fact that Discord is quite frequent. So that's a whole other discussion in and of itself. So I'm just going to hand off to one of the other two guys if you want to talk further about Ana, but I actually think it changes a lot more than just her. Let's go straight to Zen right right after this. I, I think to hone in on this Ana thing, I think we all agree that the nade is more or less justified because of how dexterous it is, because you got, you still have the amp healing, you still have anti-heal, it still deals damage and does a burst of healing to your team, so that swing factor when you lob it on somebody on your team and it hits things around it, remember, it got that big multiple meter the size of the galaxy <laughs> radius buff a while ago, so it's really big and easy to hit and has a great area of effect. So I think the nade is probably where it needs to be. Where I'm concerned is the difference in the duels that's going to require Ana to take an entire extra shot to hit, and I think if the damage was still 80, it would still be two shots, it'd equal 160, and a nade would deal 30 damage, meaning that there would still be that 10 damage that you would need to finish off that target. So it would be shoot, shoot, nade, and a melee to duel something, or a third shot anyway. Whereas right now, you need 60, 120, 180, and a nade. So it's three shots and a nade no matter what. Whereas it's very close on that razor thin's edge of, of being very difficult to win that duel to always losing it, basically. That one shot difference is, is all the difference, really. Because the difference between that Genji or that Farah killing you over and over again and you losing the game. I'd just like to compare that to a skilled Zen that if you duel a Zen, I think a lot of DPS players will own up to being completely and utterly destroyed by a Zen occasionally. And I think that if Zen does kind of... Zen always was more interchangeable with Ana than Lucio. Obviously, Lucio is like hugely important still to the game. I don't think that changes at all. But I think it's reasonable to say now that Zen can take care of himself better than Ana can. And I think that's an interesting change. It hasn't been that way for a long time. Because he can headshot, obviously, right? And the dueling with Zen at close range is ex an exciting thing. And I think dueling Ana for a long time has felt bad because you would get on her and then if she nades at close range, she might nade herself, get 100 HP, and now you're anti-nade and if you're Genji or whoever, feeling very uncomfortable because now you can't get healed. I think that's a good area to nerf. I just think this nerfed it too much where if you're actually hitting shots with her rifle, which isn't that easy to do on a lot of these smaller characters anyway, that you should be rewarded with that damage, I think. And it, I, I would personally have that reverted back to 80. But we'll see when this goes live. Uh, po possibly she's still the top of the meta, but I don't think so. I just want to bring in a few of the other changes that also affect Ana, so, or Ana. One of the biggest ones, one of the worst things you can do to an Ana is a Winston bubble. And with that getting a buff, that's actually a huge deal that might not be initially as obvious. So if the bubble is up more, She's going to have less opportunity to heal teammates at distance because if there's a Winston bubble in between her and her team, she can't get to them. Um, obviously, it's a more direct threat to her specifically if Winston is diving her because the grenade does less, she does less damage, all that kind of stuff. And even though Zen is very, very, very susceptible to being dove, he can discord an incoming Winston if it's not bubble. And now through a barrier too, even, because that's what the buff did, right? I think we should jump into talking about Zen, whereas... Ana is almost useless to that bubble. Sleep can't go through it, Nade can't go through it. The Discord can punish that Winston. I think the change to Zen of his Discord going through barriers is potentially one of the biggest changes 
in a long time. Actually, I think it's, if it goes through Zarya bubbles, that, that's a big deal, okay? I think that maybe uh, what this patch is actually doing is try to redefine the interactions between dive and backline, I feel, to a certain extent. And I think that they're positioning Zen to be, if you want to play support and you want to also be able to duel, then Zen is the answer to that. That is the hero that you should be playing. Um, obviously he has uh, drawbacks, his healing's not great for emergency healing, all that kind of stuff. But it feels to me like they're just shifting things around so that uh, Zen is much, much better at dueling and, and kind of taking care of himself than Ana is necessarily. And Ana has uh, been moved back to being primarily a healer instead of this hero that had so many things in her kit that she could do that was admittedly hard to play. I have to say, I actually agree with Frida. I feel that this harsh, this nerf is a little bit harsh. I think that her damage staying at 80 is reasonable, actually. I always had a bit of a problem with her grenade. It just did too many things. It's like, you know, with every other deployable grenade or a flashbang or something like that, if you whiffed it, there was always huge punishment, but an Arna nade has this massive radius. It could hit enemy teammates, your teammates. It could hit you with relative ease. I always felt it was a bit too dexterous. So nerfing that, I can kind of understand, but I do feel her damage is a little bit out of order. I think for me, um, and I'm going to move on a little bit here, but I'm thinking Mercy is looking very, very good with this. I mean, Winston's there a little bit to counter her, I guess, but Mercy's been very good since she got her change from the PTR patch to live, where she can no longer be killed once she reses. That way she can sustain the fight a little bit longer after she reses her whole team. That coupled with the fact that Anna can no longer burst heal everything. So what would happen before is Mercy would, would res, but by the time the res had gone off, the enemy team were all healed because of Anna. Now that can't happen anymore, making the res even more valuable. So for me, I think I, we're going to see Mercy everywhere. I'm already seeing her everywhere, and I hated seeing her everywhere because she wasn't that great a lot of the time. But I see with all these different changes now that it, it, it could be very, very good for Mercy at all levels of play. I know she's always been better at lower levels but she was useless at masters until very recently but now she's just everywhere and i think before the even patch going live shows that when it does she could just be just insanely good back to where she was originally when the game came out where everyone dies and now everyone's back again and um it's going to be interesting where the support meta shifts to because i still believe lucio needs to be used 80 percent of the time Maybe not on defense, but on King of the Hill and attack, you just nearly always need a Lucio. So who is that next one that you take with him? Especially if Sombra's going to be picked, who is almost like a hybrid support at times where you can solo heal and have a Sombra on the team. I think the support meta is going to be very interesting when this drops. That point about Mercy, I think, is incredibly sound, and I agree completely. But something that you said that I think held a lot of weight that... Mercies at higher levels were almost useless. And now to that point, keep in mind, if we are to give the developers the benefit of the doubt here and that all of these massive nerfs to Ana were warranted, I think it kind of gives credence to that argument because if you're at a higher level of play and you can get that value out of Ana, well, this is value that they felt they had to remove from Ana because if you picked Mercy in these situations instead of Ana all this time, you're really just kind of selling yourself short because she did so much. Now that divide between them is starting to get really, really thin. Now to the point of Mercy versus Winston, Actually, as Winston being another character that I play a ton, he's not as good against Mercy as you'd think because she can fly away and she can fly faster than you can jump. Whereas Winston's bubble can zone out Ana entirely, stop all of her abilities from working if you land it right, and she's a sitting duck once you land on her. Mercy can actually fly away, so Winston's not bad against Mercy by any means, but more direct damage that can hit her reliably is very important because a few buffs ago, when they were still tinkering with Mercy, she got that passive that allows her to heal much more rapidly if she's able to get away, and Mercy can sort of have a almost Harry Potter chasing the golden snitch through the air type play style, where she keeps getting away, and almost like that Roadhog you can never kill, Mercy can stay alive for a long, long time. If you don't focus fire enough or continuously get damage on her, she'll just heal herself back up quite uh, frequently. So, uh, a lot of supports looking very good, but I think at the end of the day, I'm almost 
worried that Zen will be at the top again and it'll be difficult to compete with Discord value because I think Discord's one of the next to speed boost is one of the best single abilities in the game. And since you can set up your team fights very cleanly, and we haven't said this point yet about Zen, uh, this is important as well, because he can keep his Discord where he wants it through barriers. And there's, of course, the flow of his character because his right click recovers faster, smaller change, but more importantly, this Discord thing, he more actively can be shooting all the time. That anytime you take time off of required of Zen from placing orbs, he can be dealing more damage. So it isn't just that he has that quality of life, it's that the flow of his character is now increased, meaning the value of his character is increased as well. I'm not worried about this. I just like to point this out. I'm very excited about <laughs> this change. Eddie to GM in one day after this patch has come out. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, so Sombra and Junkrat, do you want to talk about that? Sombra, I'm really excited Junkrat. for, personally. Oh. <laughs> go ahead, you, go, you can go pick one. I want Junkrat. Junkrat, I used to, uh, whoever doesn't know this, I used to be really good at Junkrat in the first kind of season and a half, and I loved playing him, but he became so useless so quickly, and... Even with the return of Farah, you know, in this new patch, if she's really, really good and hard to kill, I still feel like Junkrat, without being able to take damage, is just so, so powerful. Because one weakness of his is if someone gets close to you, you usually end up killing yourself, right? That's generally what's going to happen unless you manage to hit a mine, which didn't hurt you before. But... Now, if you're in the face of anything with Junkrat, the hitbox on the balls he shoots is so big that you're not going to miss them and they don't do damage to you either. So if you find yourself in a horrible situation in amongst the enemy team, you're actually dealing hundreds of damage every second or two and taking none yourself. And then you can just drop a concussion mine and get out of there. I think it's a very, very good change to him without really changing his kit too much. And I'm looking forward to to playing him. I really am. And uh, him not being able to take that damage is great. And I'm assuming that's for his ultimate too. So how many times have you popped your Junkrat ultimate and someone's there and you kill yourself? Well, now you kill them and you're fine and you can carry on with your day. You can get back in there and just shoot people in the face. And that's what's great. Tracer's in your face usually, shoot her, and you're going to do damage to yourself. But now, no, she dies, you're fine. And I think that it's a very, very big buff to him in a way that um, that's very interesting. It's just Farah that worries me. It really is. It, it, if you pick him, Farah counters him, and and she's just so good. She's just, she's just going to be so, so good. It kind of worries me a little bit. One thing we have to always remember about Overwatch, which is why I think some people might undervalue this change and say like, oh, well, what does that really do? Overwatch is a very close to medium range game most of the time because you talk about so many characters that want to close the distance on you especially versus a junk rat tracer reaper a diva whoever just so many of the characters want to be really close genji even and that increases his ability to duel them whereas before you wouldn't really want to duel them necessarily oftentimes as junk rat but now you can have the option to barrel stuff them as well and hit them directly without injuring yourself is a, is a massive thing. So that now he doesn't just have that, that awkward middle range damage that he wants to be getting. He actually can fight at close range, which is a huge thing and exciting for Liam, our Junkrat main of uh, hidden Junkrat main <laughs> in our group. Am I, sorry, I just want to come in here. I actually don't think Junkrat is going. It, I don't see us in the new Junkrat meta, I have to be totally honest. I've always seen him as a bit of a one-dimensional hero, a bit of a glass cannon, because I actually think he's kind of e easy to kill, actually, especially with like a medium-range hitscan. I don't think he's that great against those heroes. Uh, I don't think he's speci like specifically good against flanker heroes. It's good for him that he can't hurt himself with his own explosions, and I'm sure you will win more duels than you did before as Junkrat. That I'm sure of. But I don't think he's going to come to define the meta because I think the hero that simply looks too good out of all of these changes is Farah. And I think that unless people can find us... Farah has always been a hero that if you don't find an answer for, she will roll you. That is, it's just that way in this game, I, I feel. And now she's even better through changes to other people. And that I, I just believe that she's going to dominate more. Will, Junk, will Junkrat be better at the job that you can do with him? Yes, for, for sure. 
But I don't think he's going to be this sudden hidden hero that's everyone's going to play and it's going to change the whole game. I just don't see that. No, I don't think either of us thought he'd be top of the meta, but I think he'd be closer to where like Hanzo is now. If you're really good with his shots, you can deal damage, basically. So more of a carved out niche rather than defining the meta at all. But keep in mind, too, if you have, say, a really dominant hit scan on your team, like maybe even Widow, Junkrat can do the heavy lifting damage at the choke and the main bulk damage because he shoots so fast. That's something that I think a lot of people might not know if you don't play Junkrat and haven't seen him forever, is that his DPS of how quickly he can shoot, it's quite a bit more than Farah. Not exactly double. Farah shoots one a second. Junkrat is like a little bit more than half of that, but it, it comes out very rapidly. And of course, he has the mind, which Farah doesn't. His ability to burst really quick is strong. So I think he's more on par with like a, a Hanzo skill shot if you're that good with him. But anyway, moving on, uh, Orisa got some changes that I think I don't even know if we really can talk about because we thought she wasn't good enough and she's getting nerfed. So Maybe we're just completely wrong, but uh, it's the PTR, of course, so the feedback you might get on the PTR, even in droves on the forums and stuff, is likely to be off, really. I mean, the Bastion changes went through, for instance, and luckily they got reverted quickly, but the PTR is not the best environment to be testing things, so I'm not really sure where they're coming from with the changes to her. Uh, maybe this is just a preliminary setup to other things they're going to do because sure, her ult, I think was pretty good as far as ults go. Uh, her magazine size is pretty negligible as far as I'm concerned. The changes to the rest of her kit is what we were worried about. You can refer to our Orisa video to hear more about our thoughts on that. I don't think they've shifted at all as far as I know. No, I feel it's way too soon to be buffing or nothing. I, I, I've not even got used to her being in the game at all, let alone having changes made to it. But, you know, they might have data that supports it, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, I feel. So the only thing we haven't really spoke about is Sombra, and she's my least favourite teammate hero, I think, one of. She's in the top two or three. So I don't have really strong opinions on this other than her being buffed is a good thing because I think too many people find it difficult to leverage her kit in the right way and it'll be interesting to see her be easier but then how quickly does she become OP? I I'm not really sure on that. I think I think our Sombra expert is Frido here really. I've grown to love playing Sombra and I think I grow to love characters that are sort of counterpicking the mainstream matchmaking meta oftentimes anyway, but uh, during the Bastion meta when everyone picked a Bastion, uh, Sombra was an amazing pick and I still think she's quite good in a lot of situations, but mainly for the fact of the positioning and the timing that you can seize with her and having a four second cooldown on Translocator amplifies that to the point where she can be jumping up in the air, jumping behind you, getting away very frequently and almost always be able to do it because really you, you're going to go into a fight, start shooting and the four seconds is going to be up by then, you know? So she's always going to be able to do that. As far as the, the stealth thing, I think 15 meters is still a massive array of sound that uh, makes it so that you're still going to be able to hear her when she goes invisible. That's not really a big deal. The, the translocator is the key because there's some, I think I want to make a somber guide as well because there's so many cool things you can do by like quickly jumping to the high ground or getting at an off angle to something when it is injured and finish it off in a way that other characters can't right? Uh, Tracer gets blinks constantly, and yes, is better at dueling, but Tracer can't get on high ground easily. Sombra can, especially now that she has Translocator more often. So I'm excited about this change. I think it's the right kind of change to Sombra in order to make her more effective, and I think she's good. Uh, she's even better against some heroes that I think are going to be considered good uh, in the future, like Farah, for instance, because she can deal a lot of reliable damage at medium range. So once Farah gets in the air, Sombra can pop out randomly and finish her off because she can see her through the walls and stuff, but at least deal some damage. She's not a hard counter by any means, but if you had to start picking like who are your supports, who are your uh, choices in, in your team comp, Sombra isn't something that's going to die instantly to Farah and not be able to do anything to her. She's one of the, the options to help the Focus Fire Farah effort. And she can jump in the air now more frequently with Translocator. So I suppose you can fly in the air and start shooting Farah in the face. That'll be fun. I'm going to do that. So uh, other than that, I think that's the entire patch wrapped up, guys. Anything left to say? 
Uh, I think for me, really, it's just going to be interesting. It really is. I don't know how much of a fan I am of Mercy being really good again, but the other changes I like a lot. I like all of them. I think we'll see possibly some kind of a Farah change. I actually do. I think she's going to be too good and too hard to counter. Personally, I think she's going to be Discord. way too I strong. think the only thing that I have to... Sorry to cut across you there. The only thing that I think we really have to evaluate is that if Discord becomes the dominant thing, it's almost like everyone's damage values that are known have to be rethought. Because if Discord is on the map all the time, that's kind of the game functioning completely differently uh, for a lot of it. And as a Zen player, Zen is easily my best hero obviously this is good for me but i am also thoughtful of whether it might be taken back a little bit because if zet whenever any one hero comes to define uh, the game for a long period of time like anna did i think that's not exactly uh, healthy although zen is a sk- i think he's a skill hero so i'm you know obviously i'm happy it's a hero that i play but you know we'll have to reevaluate how devastating discord can be if it's literally on the map all the time well guys if you enjoyed the discussion video please hit the like button it really does help us out subscribe for more we upload each and every day so you're gonna want to hit the bell icon so you can get notified when our videos go live linked in the description where you can check out our twitch page our twitter and our discord server where you can find the zenyatta main of your dreams that's been it for frito and the gang for your overwatch we'll see you guys next time